If we want to do some explicit computations with integral notation, we have to specify, of course, what a1, a2, and a3 are, or what b11, b12, etc. are. Often, however, these numbers are seen as components of a vector, if you have one index, or elements of a matrix, if you have two indices. So this is how we will specify our AI and BIJ in this video. And then we will notice something interesting. Using the integral notation, we'll see that we are effectively computing matrix products and inner products. So let us take a look in this video. So what about the AI? So we see them as components of a vector A. Uh, we call those components AI and then we can put them in a vector. So a1 equals 3, a2 equals 2, and a3 equals 1 in this case. And notice that we write the components of the vector a with respect to the standard basis, and we put those brackets here around. That's a bit different from linear algebra. Similarly, for the matrix B, uh, if you have something with two indices, so we consider these B, I, J, as elements of a matrix uh, B. And then we have here our B11, and then the B12, and the B13, uh, and so on. So this is a convenient way to tell what the B11 and so on are. So just write them as a matrix, and if you have something with one index, write this as a vector. Now let's do some computations. For example, from A, compute BI equals B, I, J, A, J. So we have a free index, so we have a, a B1, a B2, and a B, B3. So what do we have for our B1? Uh, then I equals 1, and we have to sum uh, J from 1 to 3. So we get a B11, A1, plus B12, A2, plus B13, A3. So that's this expression over here. And let's see what they are. Well, B11 is equals 2 times the a1 equals 3, so 2 times 3 equals 6, uh, b12 equals a 3, times the a2 equals a 2 equals a 6, and b13 equals 0, times the a3 equals a 1, so you get a 0, so that's what's written over here, and 6 plus 6 equals 12. Now, what about the b2? Then we have to pick the b21, which is over here, which is a 0 times 3, so a 0. Then the b22 two two equals a 5 times the 2 equals a 10. And then the b23 times the 1 times the 1 equals a 1. And we get 11. Now for the last one. So there we need the b31, which is over here, which is a 0 times a1 equals a 3, so, but still 0. Then the b3. 2 uh, is a 2 times a 2 from a2 gives a 4 and finally the b3 3 is a 1 times a 1 equals 1 so 4 plus 1 equals 5 so that's how you can compute this bi product moving on to the next example b now say well let's compute a uh, matrix b times vector a and define that choose that call that vector B. So just take the normal matrix B, take the normal vector A, and compute B times A, just as you did with the new algebra. So put the matrix here, vector there, and use any uh, rule you like, like row column rule. And then you get, uh, uh, well, that's row column rule. So a first row, 2, 3, 0, in a product with 3, 2, 1, gives you 6 plus 6 plus 0 equals 12. Second component, uh, 0 plus 10 plus 1 equals 11. Third component, 0 plus 4 plus 1 equals 5. So you get the vector 12, 11, 5. And what you see is that actually this product over here, uh, matrix B times vector A uh, yielding a vector B, uh, does actually the same as what you have been doing here in integral notation if you view these as components of the vector B. So actually, uh, an integral connotation is an alternative way uh, to write matrix times vector. Let's do the uh, 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 one more example. 
So compute S equals B I J A I A J. So now we have to sum over two indices. Fortunately, um, we have already uh, computed the B I J A J over here. That was the uh, yields B I. So that is B I J A J uh, can be replaced by B I. And notice that we can just fiddle around with these numbers. We can uh, the B I J A I A J is the same here as A I B I J A J because they are all numbers. Using this integral notation, we don't have to worry about the order. The order uh, is just taken care of by the indices themselves. Like in, if you do matrix times matrix, you have to be careful with the order. This is here no problem. So you can just uh, interchange all of that. So what's left? You have to compute A I B I. Uh, here you have the uh, the B1, B2, B3, and here the A1, A2, A3. So what do you get? Uh, A1, B1 equals 36, plus uh, A2, B2 equals 22, it's together 58, plus uh, A3, B3 equals 5, so add 5 more, and you get 63. So that's example C. And now what happens if you compute B times A first, that gives us a factor B, and then take the inner product with factor A, so you get basically a inner product of A and B. So taking the inner product of these two factors over here, we get a 36 plus 22 plus 5. So we got also 63. So here you see uh, that this AI, BI uh, actually boils down to taking the inner product between the factors A and B. So that's what the in integral notation does for us it either gives us inner products in this AIBI sense or it gives us like a matrix times vector if you compute BIJ times AJ